Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of Design Like a Pro. I'm your host, Nikki, and today I'm going to show you how to take a template from a popular printing site and use that to form your postcards to have the right mailing specifications for the post office. And we're just going to design a simple 4x6 postcard today based on this template and I'll show you how to format everything in Photoshop and then finally export it out in InDesign. So let's get started. I'm on uprinting.com. Now I don't actually use uprinting.com for printing, but they have wonderful templates that you can download and use to make sure that all of your content and your postcards are in the right place for mailings. So if you go to uprinting.com and then go to postcards, go over here to templates, and click on browse and download they have a lot of different templates that you can download for different programs so I'm going to use the Photoshop template and then you can see a lot of standard postcard sizes I usually use 6x4, 7x5 or 9x6 size postcards the most the other sizes I don't usually use too much occasionally I'll use 11x6 just to make a little bigger statement in, in the mail but my standard sizes are those three. So if you want to use a 6x4, you would download this file. And I already have it ready to go in Photoshop. So let's see what that is. All right, I have my postcard here. This is the front. You have pretty much creative freedom when it comes to the front of your postcard, whether you're mailing it or not. So I here have a very simple postcard. It's an art postcard that I can mail out to people. I can hand to people, show them my artwork and they can frame it if they want to, they can hand it out to somebody else, but it's a nice little keepsake that has a lot of different purposes here. So as you can see, this is the front. I have my bleed set up, so I'll show you really quickly what the size is. See, it's six and a quarter by four and a quarter. That quarter of an inch extra is all about the bleed. So that's why I have my guides here. So everything that I don't want to get trimmed away needs to stay in between those bleeds. So the front is very simple in design and we don't need to worry too much about mailing. So I already have saved this out as a flattened TIFF. That means that I've gone over here and selected flatten image to make sure everything's compressed down. That works especially true if you have any text like I have here. So that's the front. Now let's look at the back. This is the key here to the mailing. This is what your template from you printing will look like. It has all of these great guides to give you an idea of where content needs to go and where it needs to stay away from. So we have our mailing address area here. That's where the label or a handwritten note of where it's going to, your name and address, city zip, all of that goes here. The barcode for the post office goes here, so you need to make sure nothing is in this area. This is for the stamp, so you need to make sure nothing's in here. So pretty much you can put content in these white areas. Also paying note that you have the same bleed on the back, so you have a safety zone here that you know that you need to keep your text into to ensure it doesn't get cut off. So you can start dropping in elements here however you'd like to design the back. I made a simple blank postcard design where it is room for me to mail out to somebody where I write a personal note and then put a label or address on there, put my own stamp in this section, and this just says what the artwork on the front is with my name and website address. So this is a very simple keepsake type postcard. You can use these for exhibition openings where everything on the left is detailing your event. There's a lot of design opportunities for postcards, and this is an inexpensive way to get the word out about your event. So now that we have our back all laid out, it's very simple. Now we're going to take everything into InDesign and save it out for printing. So I have InDesign ready to go where I've dropped in my elements, but as you can see, it's a 6x4 with that eighth of an, eighth of an inch bleed on all sides and I have just imported and placed my front and my back. Important to note here, your front and your back need to be on two different pages in InDesign. 
So over here in pages, you just need to make sure that you have two different pages and your front and your back land on each separate page. Most printers prefer this and then you save it out as one PDF. So we're ready to go and export. So we go to File, Export. I'm going to save this to my desktop real quick and replace what's already there. I always use press quality. This standard right here is something that you need to talk to your printer about. The 2001 is the safest bet that you'll know that it's probably going to be compatible with all printers, but you need to ask them their specifics on this one. The compression, I never set this to sample. I always have it down sample. Marks and bleeds, you want to make sure you have crop marks here so the printers can use that to trim in. And you want to ensure that use document bleed settings is checked. Your output, I always convert to destination, preserve numbers, and my document CMYK. This ensures that if I have an item in here that I forgot to convert into CMYK in Photoshop, or I have some RGB images in here, this will automatically convert that for me so I don't have to go back and change all of those images. And everything else is just set to default. So then we hit export. It's going to save that PDF. And I will show you. We open that up. This is what your printer is going to see. Crop marks. Everything is within the safe zone. It's not going to be trimmed away. I actually might move that one in a skosh more. It's pretty close to the edge. But now I have a postcard that once I get it back from the printer is going to be plain. Very neat little gift to give to somebody or I can just send it in the mail and let people know about my artwork. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave those in the comments below. You can always send your ideas for upcoming tutorials to ideas at NikkiHeart.com and I'll do my best to feature those in an upcoming tutorial. Until next time, thanks for watching. Thank you.